Hey guys, welcome to the Linux channel. So if you guys are into system software development and especially if you are uh, beginning your career as a system software developer or network uh, uh, software or uh, uh, kernel programmer and uh, things like that. Uh, so I have discussed a video about how you can uh, become a uh, software developer and what are the prerequisites uh, required in terms of becoming so and uh, unfortunately the college system or the school uh, whatever the syllabus they put forward it is just uh, adequate for very basic uh, you know essential things unfortunately they forget to cover about uh, the true life skills of being a software uh, engineer and as well as the companies who screen you so that you prepare for these interviews are also you know in terms of in a big confusion they ask uh, uh, completely uh, out of context questions they ask uh, uh, various uh, questions which nowhere are uh, things like in case if you are into c programming they ask various things about pointers and other stuff trust me to be frank uh, it is not something uh, you know not always required even to do a proper sensible you know software application so this is where i suggested you to go through uh, existing source code and uh, it can be various applications it can be say for example source code of ls command source code of mkdir uh, stuff like that besides uh, going through the source code of uh, linux kernel the issue with the linux kernel is uh, it's quite huge uh, it is not something suggested for a very basic uh, uh, beginner because uh, it has certain components so one have to understand the overall architecture of the kernel and the big picture of the kernel and then uh, each uh, subsystems as they go through the source code they need to understand where exactly this entire thing fits so this is not something uh, recommended for a complete beginner so this is where i suggest you to go through some interesting uh, uh, projects uh, i mean source code of these projects and then you can uh, start learning in real sense how these things are used say for example you can uh, learn about uh, you know file operations uh, f open f close and stuff like that in c programming the issue is you just you know uh, refer books or online uh, tutorials uh, where they just uh, show a basic example <coughs> i'm sorry i got some terrible cold so which is why i got some uh, porridge uh, uh, so that uh, you know i get uh, some sort of a relief so let me take a sip yeah so what happens is uh, so when you go through the source code of uh, simple applications uh, it gives a smaller scope it's easy to understand and uh, if you want to learn about file operations it is fine you have learned now uh, with some online tutorial or in a book but the source code when you uh, go through a big source code of an application it is not just about opening a file it will open the file and then it will do a lot more things say for example uh, you know socket uh, uh, communication uh, suppose udp sockets or icmp sockets uh, i mean uh, sockets for icmp packets so we can take an example of ping source code and we can go through how it has been implemented and how uh, various uh, APIs uh, fall into the place and uh, what is the architecture uh, could be behind this you know implementation of uh, ping command so as a part of that in this episode i would like to discuss uh, to an extent about um, ip utils uh, um, project and within the ip utils as you can see here uh, you can see uh, various uh, you know uh, commands uh, so one is uh, uh, ping you can see here and uh, apart from that you have this uh, trace path and trace route uh, and stuff like that uh, which is something uh, very commonly you may be using in your uh, you know system uh, debugging and stuff like that so ping as everyone knows uh, it's a part of uh, a essential ingredient for any network analysis and connectivity you know uh, or performance uh, uh, analysis of any uh, you know networked system so what we can do is we can go through this uh, source code and we can uh, uh, put you know various uh, pieces together and we can analyze uh, uh, in a way like what could be the architecture behind uh, you know the ping command implementation so what you can do is uh, you can go to the uh, github uh, and then you get the online version of a source 
so alternatively what you can do is you can also download this entire uh, package and uh, you get uh, something called as uh, ip utils uh, hyphen master so i have both the things uh, in my system as you can see here i have downloaded the entire source code or the package and it has all this uh, source files so, so you can uh, go through uh, through your uh, favorite id or something like that i don't recommend uh, uh, you guys using much you know va editor because it's just a very basic uh, primitive editor which doesn't uh, uh, show you the sort of big picture you are just going through a small segment of whatever it is happening as so you are not going through a sort of you know um, a bird's eye view of the source code so i uh, generally use a bluefish so i I recommend you to use an id something like you know bluefish uh, so that um, it is more easier so you can see here uh, it does all this uh, highlighting of um, context sensitive you know code uh, uh, elements as such you you can see here it starts uh, with the main and uh, stuff like this so but as a part of this uh, what i can recommend is we can uh, you can directly use the github version so you can click uh, ping.c let's take an example of ping source code it's uh, easy uh, with this source code you will also see the real implementation of a uh, socket um, uh, apis just uh, by going through some uh, tutorial or books it is not going to give you anything as such so it's just they are going to say a small demo code see i have also done once a tutorial as well as a video about udp sockets so you can see here go to linux channel tutorials and udp uh, sample code for sockets and i have also included my uh, sample source code so anytime you can use this as reference in case if you want to uh, put the socket uh, ipc within your uh, you know source so so, so you have this uh, socket uh, you know client and server so this doesn't constitute a real project so this is what is my point if you are starting uh, Uh, if you are getting prepared to become a software engineer it is not something adequate this is just about uh, a small uh, interface it's you can just compare this with uh, some sort of you know i have this let's say this drive you know this is just a sata port so the sata port or the power port for the sata it doesn't constitute a hard drive as such right? you can understand so the project context is so huge in the, what you are dealing and what you are learning about you know file apis or socket apis is just not adequate so this is where exactly you need to have that sort of a big picture so this is also required for you to know and don't focus on uh, these college questions like string reversal and all this crap as such this is not a crap or uh, you know getting some fibonacci series numbers or uh, putting something in a palindrome or not or checking a string is palindrome or not this these are questions which they make you uh, practice and they kind of assess your skills in their you know exams and stuff like that so this is sort of required but it is not a real software itself as such. so the real application is far more uh, a bigger so you may be aware of your mobile apps and other stuff that's what is a real application is not you know something like this so let's uh, not waste any more time so let's go to the github and you can click ping.c so before that you can see here it is spread across uh, over multiple files you can see ping.c and ping.h and ping6 uh, uh, common and the ping common.c so it is spread across these four files so this is a very basic uh, you know quick overview i'm not uh, here to talk about the, its overall complete architecture of all the apis how it is implemented and all so this gives a sort of a push so that you can also learn how you do a code walk with any existing source so this is what is more important uh, you should understand any programmer spends a lot of time in terms of doing a code walk and code analysis and understanding the source code rather, rather than uh, doing any uh, code itself so you should understand this as so this itself constitutes a quality required to become a software engineer so this is what it is so open this and uh, you can see here it has this uh, basic license so as a programmer you should focus that always in which way uh, the source is released and uh, this I, i mean i just want to say that see this video is uh, to an extent i want to give a sort of picture uh, uh, 
uh, in case if you are a beginner how you should approach so this is in in case if you are an advanced uh, programmer maybe this may little annoy you because these things subconsciously you may be aware of these things already so this is not something uh, you may be well interested in terms of but if you are a beginner take these tips and work on that so that it will help you in a long run as well. so so pay attention to the copyright notices and uh, pay attention in which year it has been started and uh, last updated when they must have updated and who are the authors involved in the same so this is going to help you to learn how things are approached how things are done in a more you know uh, professional way i don't say it as commercial way because this is not any commercial code instead it is a neatly written neatly implemented uh, code which is stable and which is used in all the systems as we know so you can go through the same you can see here it uh, describes uh, various authors and uh, in which situation and which uh, place they have started this project and uh, they may also share about any existing known bugs and uh, to be done uh, tasks or uh, uh, features to be supported something in the as a part of comment so this gives them an indication that what could be the scope and roadmap for the project overall so next if you focus uh, like any other uh, user space uh, you know command it will have some uh, main so you have this main api so what is the thing is uh, don't ever start immediately with the main api in, in general you can go through the overall structure before the main they may have some apis which is like very much essential uh, something like wrappers and they may have some sort of uh, uh, abstraction apis and stuff like that so you can see here uh, eventually as one can understand ping have to create a socket to send icmp packet so you have somewhere uh, after all the command uh, you know uh, parameters are being passed so the ping takes various options you can see here it has a huge switch case statement so within that uh, huge while loop so if you know everything is met in case if there are no uh, uh, errors in the command uh, option pass uh, passing the command option so then it is going to go further and then it is going to initiate uh, that uh, you know ping session so you can scroll down you have this uh, create socket and you have uh, two variants one is for uh, uh, you know v4 uh, and one is for v6 so you have this uh, create socket and instead of using the directly the socket api they are using this abstract api so this is one thing you should learn as a part of being a student is you have to create such abstraction you, you should understand the basic uh, uh, you know file command and uh, you know socket commands is not adequate sometimes you need to do the basic uh, you know check whether the file is existing in that folder whether the path uh, what you have passed is existing if that is not existing you need to pass an error and then come out of that loop uh, i mean come out of that context so this is what exactly they abstract it the entire stuff if uh, you know a socket file descriptor is returning null and check that null and if it is not that so there's a huge difference seeing a code like this see for example a code like like this where in which i'm using this socket and then create a socket and then if the socket is not uh, uh, created or it, if the api is not uh, file descriptor is not created or if the api is not successful <coughs> i'm returning a socket error and then coming off of the loop so this is how a small example source code looks but not the real source code so this is what you should understand as a beginner so you go here and by the way i'm just also eating breakfast so i have this sore throat and uh, throat infection but at the same time i thought uh, uh, it will be very difficult if i don't have something hot uh, when i take this video because i may cough terribly so 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 if you see the difference between something like this versus something like this you can understand this is how a real source code is done so you can see here this is an abstraction api so if you go to this api create socket you can go up you can see here create socket they have implemented it's a complete abstraction you can see it is abstracting everything and finally it is populating that socket file descriptor and you are passing this family and other uh, you know api so i'm not here to discuss about each and every uh, minute spec and details about uh, the architecture of ping command and um, i want to discuss how you can how i can start you to you know get to this flow and then how you can do yourself it's like that so 
it's like that so you have this uh, you know socket api you can see here this is where exactly they are calling the socket api and they are passing all this uh, you know prerex right uh, uh, parameters for that api and then they are doing the if it is uh, returning uh, um, you know negative value or if it is returning any error and stuff like that it is uh, been handled and then uh, they are doing all other you know basic uh, prerequisites required for that api so this way you don't have to do or bring this garbage code inside your main code so this way your main will look much cleaner uh, or wherever you are calling this create socket api will look much cleaner otherwise just imagine you are copy pasting this inside that so in this case they have this create socket two times so they are calling that you can see here let me scroll down you can see here two times they are calling that uh, one for v6 and one for v4 so you can imagine if you don't have that you you have to write the same garbage each time as well. so i mean to say garbage because it's a repetitive code so it it looks really annoying and this is how you can differentiate yourself as are you a beginner in programmer or are you a you know expert in programming so you can see the way how it has been in indented so code indentation is very important so that one can understand see the indentation so it looks very easy uh, to read so the readability and so the maintainability code is enhanced by putting all these things in places so so this is where they have created the socket so before that we can see here what could be the you know uh, ping argument so if you just type ping it shows uh, it has two variants uh, ping and ping uh, 6 uh, hyphen 6 for ipv6 and then it has all this uh, uh, you know parameters uh, corresponds to each you know variant because ipv6 is completely different it has this variant so let's take an example say if config so i want to do an uh, ping minus 6 uh, and i do i, I want an uh, v6 ping so in the case of v4 you will just do ping and ip address and it just works fine but in the case of v6 you see this it is not going to work because you need to pass you know um, uh, the port so you need to pass some kind of a port so that it just works so this way uh, you can see here uh, how it has been used versus how it has been implemented so you can see here create socket it is for v6 and then after that it has this uh, set uh, socket options and it is setting this socket options uh, i don't want to focus about what exactly this api does for that you need to understand how uh, uh, what are the socket APIs are and how it has been implemented and stuff like this so you can see here it has this socket options so the next thing uh, you have is uh, ping for run uh, right after the socket options you can see here ping for run is uh, looks like a uh, it's the main handler for the entire uh, you know ping operation so you can see here the ping for run is you know connected over here uh, for uh, v4 uh, ping run so the main uh, you know the run api you can see here somewhere it is doing a big while loop and it is doing all those things so let's not go into nitty gritty details let's just do a basic api uh, uh, you know code level uh, code walk as so this way you get that big picture later you can do uh, some other day you can sit and then you can go through inside each api what could be the implementation and why such apis are being split across into i mean why such logic is split across into multiple apis so you can see here ping for run and uh, we have to see sometimes this may not be implemented in the same file uh, because uh, before shooting this video i was also going uh, through this uh, source code quickly so find ping 6 run uh, you can see here if i uh, search it is not coming inside this file which means uh, they have implemented in some other file maybe this ping 6 common so i'm not sure why uh, they have put this uh, ping 4 run in this ping.c and uh, uh, ping 6 run inside a different file so in the other file you can see here uh, you can uh, search ping 6 run so inside this it has been implemented so ideally they must have pushed uh, you know ping for run inside ping underscore common or somewhere else so or maybe uh, create uh, some other file as ping for underscore common dot c so maybe they may do this restructuring in the future so this is also you should notice as the programs uh, or as the software evolves so say take an example as uh, ping command uh, initially it must have had a support for only v4 uh, packets ipv4 packets and later they must have extended that 
you know capabilities and then they must have supported v6 as well so in this way it does this branching so this is where it is quite evident that you know they have created this file and later they extended because they don't want to bloat that single file uh, ping.c into a very long file so currently if you see this ping.c uh, in this uh, you know id you can see here it uh, it is already quite large it has around uh, you know 1700 plus lines so so where you can fit the entire uh, you know ping 6 logic so this is where they have split into multiple files so you can see here it is uh, uh, ping 6 run is implemented over here so same way if you open uh, ping underscore uh, common you can see also some of the apis uh, and uh, uh, there are also uh, cases like you can see um, let me go scroll down uh, or uh, this yeah so you can see here it's a uh, usage is uh, uh, printed over here in the case of ping 6 whereas in the case of ping or v4 it is uh, you know uh, printed over here in the case of v4 so this is uh, where it is showing its usage so now what we can do is we can go through some of the other constructs so that we can understand how they have implemented the same so uh, right after that uh, ping 4 run let's go back to ping 4 run okay yeah so right after that you can uh, scroll down and uh, you can see here if it is receiving an uh, error message it has been handled over here and uh, below that uh, it has uh, some other uh, APIs and uh, below that you can see here ping for uh, parse reply which means maybe it is receiving the packet uh, from the other uh, remote system and uh, it is doing the entire uh, passing of this packet so you can see here uh, it is doing parsing so before that i forgot to mention uh, one uh, one point is so let me use this id uh, because uh, yeah here if you notice uh, uh, the main api uh, yeah you can see here uh, so create socket here it is using the socket uh, uh, protocol type is uh, IP proto ICMP you must have aware uh, in the case of UTP it uses uh, datagram and stuff like that in the case of uh, socket uh, I mean TCP it uses uh, stream and stuff like that. so you can see here it uses uh, IP proto ICMP in the case of v6 it uses IP proto v6 I ICMP v6 so this way it creates that variant and it branches out from there so we go back here you can see here parse uh, reply and it has this uh, implementation so further if you go down it has this uh, in checksum so that it calculates that uh, you know checksum of uh, you know uh, the packet and then here is the important thing it has this uh, descriptive strings for each uh, case so it has this each uh, code and for each code whatever it receives from remote system or whatever it is it should print to see for example i just type here uh, some unknown uh, address uh, say hello and then i change this uh, say one see network is unreachable or something like that so for that it needs somewhere to be printed the, the same i mean somewhere to be handled and uh, it should print the same so you have here various cases so in case if you are very interested uh, parallel you can also open uh, rfc for ping and as well as rfc i mean rfc for icmp as a whole and rfc for I icmp v6 as a whole and then we can also cross compare how the rfc is implemented in the case of something like this so you can see here it has all these cases implemented and then uh, and uh, stuff like that so in the case of ping uh, v6 you can also find uh, you know uh, v6 uh, parse replay just like you know ping 4 parse replay so this is how you can uh, uh, do a code walk and uh, you spend enough time adequate time and you can have a sort of a map you can take a paper and then you can map 
the api flow so this is also the first step the first step of anywhere uh, if you do code uh, walk is you need to map the api flow which api it started and then from where uh, you know the flow continues and how each api is called in each you know specific situation so from this you can get a mental map of in the form of flow chart or something but i don't i don't uh, like much the concept of flow chart i'm fine with this api flow i i will get exactly what they are trying to do with this it's so it's about it's all about your own uh, personal uh, uh, comfort zone so you feel whichever you feel comfortable you can do that you know approach one more interesting uh, api i thought of highlighting is in uh, ping underscore com and you have this uh, pinger uh, and this is where exactly that uh, it does that iteration you can see here uh, the developers have included this uh, documentation so please understand there's a difference between a small comment versus something like that you can see here this is something you can call quickly as a comment whereas in this case it is almost like a documentation of that uh, api so whenever they put any such documentation you have to carefully pay attention and then read the documentation first and then you can go through the implementation of the api that uh, in which way it has been implemented so you can see here you have this finger and i'm sure if you go through uh, p6 uh, ping 6 uh, or v6 you know, version of ping uh, common.c also you can find somewhat uh, you know uh, related uh, api which corresponds to the same so this way you can uh, uh, go through uh, the source you can see here you have this kind of you know APIs which is very interesting this is an API which I commonly use in my source as well get time of the day and then I calculate the total uh, difference between two timestamps uh, and then I calculate how many seconds they are apart and uh, how much is the duration it has taken from you know one packet to other packet and what is the total duration it has taken you can see here it has the real implementation and if you need to search uh, a basic uh, example of uh, get time of the day and stuff like that you can find it in internet but here is a case it has been used in a real uh, project for a meaningful application so this is what is the difference it makes so that's all i think i can conclude with this video because this is not really i want to uh, fully discuss about the architecture of the same whereas maybe um, or maybe i may uh, little bit uh, do one more extended session where in which i get as complete uh, understanding of the same and then i can uh, show you a sort of you know high level uh, uh, implementation diagram or something like that uh, uh, decoded from this sort of you know code box as such. so so that's all guys for this episode so hope you guys uh, loved watching this video in case if you have any questions uh, or um, you have any views you have any suggestions uh, discuss in uh, youtube comments or uh, send me an email across so thank you very much for watching this video have a nice day bye